Hey guys, I've been hard at work working on my Synecdoche New York analysis, but in the meantime, I thought I would do a Blu-ray collection video. I have never done such a thing before, but other critics have done it, so why not? Why the fuck not? People have asked for it. I might as well do it. Archer, season one. Uh, pretty funny show. Uh, I think it's great, and I, 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 at one point, I thought it was the best animated show on television, but now that has been replaced by another show... Uh, which I will mention in a second, because this collection starts with my TV show DVD Blu-rays. Archer Season 2, Archer Season 3. Bam! I'm doing this productively. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai. Uh, this was a gift. Thank you, Mysterioskull. Uh, I still haven't watched it yet. I feel like a piece of shit because I haven't watched it yet. I'm trying to watch it with somebody, you know? It seems like the, t the type of thing that's better to watch in a group. And, like, I'd like to see the Kai version, because that show did have a lot of fucking filler. And the Kai version is b basically the exact same thing with the filler cut out. So I'm excited to see it. I just need to need to uh, grab one of my friends and tie them up and force them to watch it. Looney Tunes Platinum Collection, Volume 1. Uh, surprisingly awesome, uh, especially given the uh, historical context. So there's ones as old as, like, the 19... 40s, I think, maybe even older. Uh, there's one that has Porky stating the Pledge of Allegiance before Under God was added into it. So he's saying one nation indivisible. So that had to have been in the 1950s. I, I, I looked up a bit of it on, on, on Wikipedia. It's a little fascinating. And uh, especially given the animation, just how much hard work went into every single one of these short films that's that's on here. I I love Looney Tunes and uh, I mean some of them are shit on here, but even if even if it's not a particularly great episode, which most of them are, uh, there's a lot of fun historical uh, context to chew on when you're watching them, and it's it's really cool. Volume two also uh, I haven't even finished volume one, but I bought volume two anyway. Not only is this a Blu-ray collection video, but it's a video where you can watch my hair dry over the course of however long it takes for me to make this. Probably shouldn't be too long. I'm trying to go do this pretty fast. Rick and Morty, best animated show on television right now. Check it out. Please watch it. Also, uh, there's a, uh, a cool uh, thing that they included. Uh, this is this little pamphlet. Uh, if you don't, if, if, if this isn't familiar to you, then hilarious. But um, there, it, what it's a parody of, this pamphlet, not only was, was it in one of the actual episodes of the show in the season, but what it's a parody of is uh, these things where uh, people want to force their religion on other people and, and guilt people into believing and so they leave these little pamphlets. These are real that I'm holding up, by the way, just because I've collected them over the years. They'll leave them in, like, public parks and campgrounds and shit so that when someone finds them, they're like, oh, I don't know who put this here. It must be from God. And and so they read through it, and they're like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm a sinner. I, I'm saying bad words. I'm having premarital sex with contraception. Oh, no, I'm going to hell. Anyway, uh, the the degree to which they were able to replicate these is so uh, impressive to me. The fact that they look so similar, and even on the back, the the one that uh, the real one is called Chick Publications, and this one just says Morty Publications. Uh, everything everything is pretty down to a T. I love it. Hilarious. Uh, if you want to read the whole thing, I don't know if somebody, like, <laughs> made a tortilla of it, uh, but, I mean, who would, like, I don't know, someone might have a scan of these that you can find on Not the Pirate at Bay anymore, because it got raided, and so I guess until that's back. Otherwise, you can buy the Blu-ray, like me, but, I mean, I didn't even know this was gonna be in the Blu-ray, it's just an awesome, nice little feature. Uh, there's special features on, on this are also pretty good. I haven't listened to all the commentaries yet, but the one featurette that they had was pretty, pretty fucking funny, so I would suggest checking it out. Best animated show on television right now. Not even, not even kidding. Um, now into the movies. Twelve Monkeys. Quite possibly my favorite time travel movie. Directed, directed by Terry Gilliam. I included a clip 
of it in my World War Z, Z, whatever review. And uh, I think if it's not Brad Pitt's per best performance is one of his best, it's probably my favorite performance by Brad Pitt. 12 Years a Slave, a great 2013 movie by Steve McQueen. No, not the dead Steve McQueen, the black Steve McQueen. And if my favorite director, Michael Haneke, dies, which he will soon, unfortunately, not because he has like cancer or anything, but just because he's really, really old, uh, Steve McQueen will probably become my favorite living director. Uh, unless he makes something soon that's like a piece of shit. I don't know, but still, he's he's consistently made fantastic movies. All of his movies are like between 8 and 10 out of 10 for me. I don't know if I would call any of his movies 10, so between 8 and 9 out of 10, which is like fantastic for, for any, any director to cons consistently and consecutively uh, p push out movies that are that great. Uh, it's, it's fantastic, and a lot of people like to brush this off and think like, oh, it depicts slavery against black people. Therefore, it is a guilt trip movie with no substance, and the only reason people like it is because I'm supposed to feel white guilt. No. That movie is called Precious. 12 Years a Slave is a fantastic film, and if you know anything about directing, cinematography, music, performances, etc. The the actual substance to film, you would know that it is a great film and whether or not any of these events in the film are happening to black or white people, it doesn't fucking matter. He told a great story and as the best black director and almost the best living director, it's about fucking time that he made a story about black people. His first two movies there's only like one black character total. So he's not he's not Tyler Perry. He's not he, he he's not race baiting. He's not pandering. He's a great director and you shouldn't you shouldn't dismiss his films just because you think that it falls in the same category as The Butler or some shit. <laughs> uh 2001 a Space Odyssey. Fantastic film. Not sure I really need to say much about it. Uh, uh, excuse me. Better special effects than a lot of shit that's out currently. Which is saying a lot for like a movie made in, what, 1968, I think. Uh, 28 Days Later. Every single person, if you go on... Well, I guess you can't go on the Pirate Bay anymore. Uh, if you go anywhere where they're talking about this blu-ray or maybe in, in forums on blu-ray.com uh people will tell you that it's shit quality like it's the worst quality of all time let's just actually see what the um does it not state the uh aspect ratio does it not say whether or not it's like 1080p or anything jesus christ it doesn't really say it doesn't really matter though because this film was made when uh, filming you, with a digital camera was a stylistic choice, not something to do as an alternative to film because all digital cameras were kind of shit. And so if, if you watch the Blu-ray, it's going to look like the worst Blu-ray transfer of all time. No, the transfer is perfect. It's the cameras that were shit. And Danny Boyle wanted to give it a more urban vibe. And... I mean, nowadays, now that everybody is a quality whore, well, I am, at least, and, and a lot of people are, and Blu-ray is a big thing, nowadays I wish that the movie didn't look so pixelated, because I would enjoy seeing more of it, um, but either way, I mean, it's the best it can be, so whatever, I'll watch it again sometime, and I mean, once once you, once you get used to it, it's not so bad. Uh, adaptation. A great film starring Nicolas Cage, written by uh, Charlie Kaufman, my favorite screenwriter, and directed by Spike Jones. And you should all, I guess you should all know who Spike Jones is. He directed Her, he directed Where the Wild Things Are, he directed, uh, excuse me, uh, Being John Malkovich. Oh my god, carbonated beverages, I'm sorry. Uh, After Earth, best comedy of 2013, 3 out of 10. Uh, amazing, amazing film. Included with purchase, a uh, digital ultraviolet. So you don't, you don't have to pirate it if you want 
it on your hard drive, you can just buy a Blu-ray and then you can put it on your hard drive. So there's no reason to pirate it. Um, oh, offer expires. Uh, <laughs> oops. So it looks like the pirates are offering a better service if you want it on your hard drive. Either that, or you can rip the Blu-ray to your hard drive, but that's an un unauthorized copy, so that's illegal and, and you're a criminal. Uh, Airplane 1 and 2. Recently got this. It was a really cheap uh, thing of, of the both of them. I haven't seen them in a while. I, I remember enjoying those films, um, or at least the first one, a lot. Uh, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's kind of stupid, obviously, but it, it started this wave of... Uh, <clears throat> parody films i think it's responsible for a lot of them I'm, I'm not sure how far back i could trace parody films similar to airplane before airplane if if there's another one uh that anybody has in mind uh i guess let me know i'm gonna grab another stack of blu-rays and give me a second the ambassador a great danish movie and most of i i think Pretty much the most the vast majority of it is in English. It's a documentary. If you want to know what I have to say about it, check out my 2011 or 2012. Jesus, I don't even know. One of those two. It's it's near the bottom of my list, but it's still great. Uh, definitely worth owning on Blu-ray. Um, it's it's I, this is region free. No region A. Wow, region A. So good to go. Uh, American Beauty. Awesome, great film. Uh, you all know about it. It'll be on my 99 list whenever that happens. Um, American Psycho. Uh, some of you guys don't like that I, I put it in my best underrated horror movies list because it's not underrated. Um, the reason why I considered it to be underrated is because even though anybody who gives a shit about movies knows about it and anybody who likes horror movies also knows about it, those those two categories have have overlap like a Venn diagram, but you you don't necessarily have to be a part of both. Anyway, uh, general public, I'm not sure knows too much about it. It it I'm basing it mostly on the fact that if you look at how much money it made in its theatrical release, which is like next to nothing, that's that's kind of why I was basing it as underrated. I can I can see why people wouldn't want me to say it's underrated, but I don't know. Regardless, it's, it's a good, it's a good movie. We should all just calm down and be friends. Uh, Amor, Amores Peros. Uh, probably. Damn, is it is it Alejandro's best movie? I don't know. Birdman was pretty awesome too. Um, everybody should check out this movie. Uh, if you d if you don't have a Region B Blu-ray player, sorry, you can't watch it on Blu-ray. There's a 1080p torrent available, but if you down... I think maybe. There has to be an HD torrent available. I haven't checked. But if you download the torrent, you're a criminal. You're not allowed to download an HD torrent of this movie because that is the loss of a sale, even though we're not willing to sell you the product that you want to buy. You're stealing from us. We will refuse to sell you a Region A copy of this Blu-ray. But if you download it, you're stealing. Check it out. It's really, it's fantastic. I love it. Amour, uh, from my favorite director I mentioned, Michael Haneke. Uh, this one, The Palm Door. It's, it was on my 2012 list. Watch my 2012 list to check out what I had to say about it. First Criterion Collection Blu-ray, Antichrist, by Lars von Trier. Some people have said that I was pronouncing his name wrong in my uh, Nymphomaniac review. Spoiler, Nymph Nymphomaniac's a piece of shit. Um, uh, no, I, I pronounced his name wrong and right. I was doing, I was doing it both. That was intentional, like, like your excuse for his shitty movies. Um, not for everybody. It's it's a little horrific, but it tries to be. It's disturbing, but it tries to be. So if you don't want to be disturbed and don't want to see kind of fucked up things, a lot of people, a decent amount of people don't like it. I, I thought it was great. Some great cinematography. There was like a moment or two that I couldn't take seriously, but overall, I think it's great. Uh, Appleseed Ex Machina. Ex Machina. 
Um, I was over at a really nerdy friend's house. I don't know if I would even call him my friend. I was with other friends that were with friends with this nerdy person, and I was just like kind of stopping by, and they were watching this, and I was like, the animation looks cool. And so then when I first when I when I got a job at HMV, which is a um, DVD Blu-ray store, um, I think this was the first Blu-ray I ever bought. So that's part of why I haven't gotten rid of it because I don't really watch it much and I don't, I'm not really, I don't really care too much about it. Sorry to the fans of this. I, it was, it's cool animation. That's for sure. I like the animation. It's a bit cheesy. Um, but yeah, I saw, I saw it playing at some nerdy person's house and I was like, mm, I should buy a Blu-ray someday now that I have a PlayStation triple. Jesus Christ. Armadillo. Uh, fantastic movie. Documentary. Um, check it out in my 2010 review. Um, Armadillo. Now, you're wo probably wondering why I have two copies of this. Well, uh, both of these are Region B. So, if you don't have a Region B Blu-ray player and you want to watch the movie in HD, you're a criminal. You're not allowed. Um, the reason why I have two of these, I swear to God, no, yeah, this they they're both region B, um, is because there's two different editions that were released. No real discernible difference between the two of them, but on my uh, region free Blu-ray player. By the way, if you don't have a region free Blu-ray player, but you have a modded PS3, you can you can. There's there's mods you can get that you can uh, make your PS3 region free if you have the fat one and if it's not updated recently. Just saying, not saying that's what I'm doing anyway. Um, there's a, they're not work. They're my only region B Blu-rays that don't work on my region free Blu-ray player. I have plenty of region B Blu-rays, and both of these editions, they won't get past the 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 opening um not they won't even get to the blu-ray menu they just get stuck these are two different purchases two different editions two different blu-rays however there's one of them and i'm forgetting which one now one of them for whatever fucking reason works on my xbox one sorry xbone it's what it deserves to be called New consoles are a piece of shit, both of them, by the way. Um, for whatever reason, one of these Region B Blu-rays works on my X-Bone, and the frame rate is shit, but it works, and it plays the movie. But the HD Torrent looks a lot better, I'm assuming. Uh, you should watch it, but if, if you're anti-piracy then I guess he can't, unless you want to settle for a DVD version. Uh, Army of Darkness. Hilarious movie. A hilarious uh, third movie of a trilogy that wasn't hilarious to begin, be, begin with. More hilarious to me. I, I, I still feel like the original Evil Dead is a bit of a comedy, even though it was probably the most serious. Uh, everybody loves the Sam Raimi Evil Dead trilogy. Audition, this will be in my top whatever of the year list. I don't even remember what year. Maybe it's also like 99 or 2001 or around that time. I don't remember. Uh, check it out. It's creepy as fuck. Avatar. I bought it when I worked at Blockbuster because uh, it was really cheap for me to buy movies. That's kind of why I have all these movies. Um, although... Like, I'm still buying Blu-rays recently because I want to support artists that are making movies that I like. Um, but there was there was a time, I guess, like, f maybe five years ago. I don't know. I, I the, this, Five years ago, I guess, when I was just uh, aggressively buying movies because I was getting them for such good discounts at all these different movie stores that I worked at. Um, this is one of those movies where I bought it and I thought that I would watch it, and I literally haven't watched it since I bought it. And I bought it when it came out. <laughs> so, 
I saw this movie once in theaters, and I kind of want to see it again, but it's... I guess I'll see it before Avatar 2. By the way, they have the fourth one listed on IMDb. The second one hasn't even come out yet. Fable, another Alejandro González Iñárritu. Iñárritu. I don't know. Dude, my pronunciation sucks, but it's difficult when a lot of the directors I like just happen to be in another country, and it's it's the struggle is real, okay? That's all I gotta say. Uh, this is a good movie. <laughs> I need I need to rewatch it before I can say that it's like absolutely great. But I know it's good. Ugh. Being John Malkovich, Criterion. Uh, fantastic movie by Spike Jones, written by Jar Char Char Charlie Kaufman. Um, Criterion. If you don't, if you're not too familiar with Criterion, uh, check out their website criterion.com they have a bunch of movies and if you know of a movie that is released both on criterion and regular blu-ray by the criterion because they give great transfers there's always shit tons of special features they stay true to the artist's vision and show alternatives to what could have been if the studio had their way like in uh i guess one that i'll i'll mention coming up um but their their transfers are great, and you've got to respect. You have to respect the fact that when you put the Blu-ray in your machine on a Criterion Blu-ray, it goes to the menu. It doesn't give you unskippable bullshit saying, "Hey, did you know that you could go to jail if you steal or make unauthorized copies of this Blu-ray because sharing it with your friends." Borrowing it, l lending it to your friend, or inviting people over to watch a movie is not a crime. But if there's a computer in between that process to bo let a friend borrow it, then that's a crime. Uh, they don't have those. They just assume that you're not a stupid dipshit that doesn't understand that pirating movies is illegal. Uh, they... <laughs> It, it it's it's the biggest deal because when they make unskippable bullshit telling you that you're not supposed to pirate things it provides incentive for people to pirate things how fucking stupid are you hollywood criterion does not do that they're a good company check out their website Birdemic, Shock and Terror, directed by the legend known as James Wynn. Uh, I saw this movie on the shelf at HMV one day, and I was like, I looked at the cover, and I was like, I gotta see this movie. Watched it pretty much in the best way I could watch it the first time, with a room full of friends, and I think we were drunk. There was like seven people in my room. I was still living in my parents' basement, uh, and when I saw this movie, it was pretty, like, I think it had just gotten released on Blu-ray, too. So I was happy to have seen it. I was happy to jump on it as a reviewer and kind of get to it before it became, like, the next The Room, you know, before it became just that thing to review. Uh, so I'm glad that I, I have some sort of integrity for that and I didn't just jump on a bandwagon. Uh, Black Dynamite. I've bought this movie, like, seven times just because it's so fucking funny. It makes a great gift. This Christmas, give the gift of Black Dynamite. I love this movie. This is... I would say the best parody movie ever made. Uh, check it out. I don't, I don't know. I don't really want to spoil it. It's so quotable. It's so great. Uh, Black Swan. Um, it, it's some people say it's a ripoff of uh, an anime. I think Perfect Blue, which I still haven't seen, and I've seen shot by shot comparisons of some parts. There's definitely inspiration. However, uh, Darren Aronofsky bought the rights to that anime before making Requiem for a Dream. So he still owned the rights before making this movie. So I'm not sure I would call it a ripoff if you own the rights to something and want to reimagine certain parts of it in, into a movie. I'm not, like, like I would have an issue with it if they pretended like it, it was something completely original and, like, maybe they didn't really advertise the fact that there was some inspiration by another anime, but they certainly they certainly didn't do anything illegal or um 
unethical. They own the rights to it, so I don't I don't see why that's such, such a big deal. Uh, Blow. Uh, one of those movies that would be better without the child actor. I bought this a long time ago. It's still pretty good. It's decent. Um, Borat. Amazing satirical comedy. If you think this movie is stupid, I disagree with you because it's not. It's very, very intelligent. It's it's stupid if you judge it on a surface level. I made a uh, a a a, an, a, pfft, a video on Borat and Bruno. You should check it out. Um, I might just add annotations every time I mention one of these things, but I kind of wanted to do this Blu-ray collection thing as just a short thing that doesn't take forever. Uh, so I apologize if they're not if they're not up. Uh, Brazil, directed by Terry Gilliam. Uh, I also bought the Criterion version, because the Criterion version, like I said, but loads of special features. And this is the movie I was talking about, where they show you what could have been if the studio got their way. Entirely different ending, entirely different opening sequence, and, and, and the cut that they have for it, uh, the, the studio cut of the film, was only ever aired, like, during the holidays on TV or something, um, so Terry Gilliam still got his way and obviously was for the better. I love this movie. It's a great dystopian, it's set around Christmas time, so it's a good Christmas movie, I guess. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you should check it out. It's great. Just do it. Bronson, if you want my detailed thoughts on this one, check out my 2008 review. Uh, Bruno, uh... Hilarious, fantastic. If you want to argue with me, first watch my uh, Bruno Borat analysis. Because a lot of people think that this is a lot worse than Borat. I disagree, and... Uh, yeah. Uh, Criterion, Breaking the Waves by Lars von Trier. And uh, I, already, I already stated my gripes with parts of this movie. Like, it's not... It's not perfect, uh, and and I stated I stated my gripes with it in my Nymphomaniac review. Spoiler alert: Nymphomaniac's a piece of shit. Um, I think it's great. I would like to watch it again sometime soon. I was really close to buying the um, Japanese Blu-ray because Japan and South Korea, and I think Taiwan, I think maybe Taiwan too. I don't remember. Japan and South Korea for sure. Uh, a region A for Blu-ray, and region A is also North America. So if you buy a Blu-ray from Japan, you can watch it in a North American Blu-ray player. Just make sure that it actually has English subtitles before you buy it. You can find that information out online. Uh, also, heads up, Spirited Away, they have a uh, Blu-ray released in Japan. There's also a region B Blu-ray for Spirited Away that came out recently, I think. Uh, but I don't think there's any region A Blu-ray other than the one in Japan. So if you want Spirited Away on Blu-ray, uh, you can go to a website like like CD Japan or uh, I think Amazon has some import options. People are selling them on eBay. I'm going to wait a little for that one because it's like <laughs> like 80 bucks for me. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm in Canada and all the shipping and import and whatnot. I don't know. Uh Breaking the Waves, pretty pretty awesome. Really depressing. Only see it if you if you want to see a depressing movie. Burn After Reading, fantastic. Uh, check it out in my 2008 review. Um, Cabin Fever, hilarious. <laughs> Directed by Eli Roth. Uh, it's really funny. And it, it tries to be funny, too. Cabin in the Woods. Along, along the same level, <laughs> I guess. Not quite as gory as Cabin Fever. Cabin in the Woods parodies evil dead it parodies parodies like every horror movie ever made pretty much it parodies like the ring it parodies friday the 13th i guess um it par like like it, it it's a parody on the horror genre and i th i think it works really well uh don't take it too seriously otherwise you might not like it that much uh <laughs> Cache. No, it's not cash. You see you see that? It's called an accent aigu. Uh so it's not cash, it's cache. My favorite director, one of his best films. It is a thriller. I would check it out. Um this is 
it I know I know it looks like it's region B. It's actually universal. Um, on the back you can see A B C. Uh, so this is this is a region free Blu-ray basically. There's only three Blu-ray regions. There's like eight DVD regions, but there's only three Blu-ray regions. Um, Casablanca was given to me as a gift. I have still yet to watch it. I would I would enjoy watching it. I just haven't seen it yet. Um, Catfish. It's in my 2010 review if you want to hear my detailed thoughts on it. Uh, certified Copy should have been in my 2010 review, but it was in my 2011 review. And because uh, a lot of foreign and ind independent films get released in really weird ways, they have multiple release dates depending on the country and et cetera, et cetera, film fest or limited release, et cetera. So this wound up in my 2011 review just because I didn't actually see it in time for my 2010 review. But... This movie really grew on me. I think it's great. I want to check out some of Abos Kiara Sami's uh, earlier films. I want to see things like Close Up and what was it? Like Taste of Cherry. Anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing his other films. Um, it, was pretty, it was really good. Uh, Changeling. This is also uh, region free. It looks like region B, but it's region free. Uh, 2008 review, if you want to see my detailed thoughts on that. I think it's great. Children of Men, famous for its uh, one-take one shots and not doing, uh, like, 40 cuts in 37 seconds like World War Z, but doing one continuous take over the span of, what, like, at least five minutes while there's shit tons of explosions and special effects going on. It's very, very well done. It's a studio movie, and it's still fantastic. Um, and by that, I mean, like, no, of course, studio movies can still be good. There's a lot of studio movies in my Blu-ray collection, if you haven't noticed. Um, but this is one where it's clear that artistic integrity actually prevailed, which is rare when you're making a movie for a studio, because when a st studio is funding you, they often don't like you to do things that are different and if you come up to them with an idea and say something like i would like to do this they'll come back at you and say well that isn't like every successful movie we've released in the past 15 years change it to make it like every successful movie we've released in the past 15 years we don't care about art we want to make money this is an instance where they were able to make art and money thank you uh and then he made Gravity, and it wasn't so good. Oops! Uh, Clockwork Orange. Fantastic Stanley Kubrick film. Highly recommend it. Um, great great mix of, of um, horrific imagery going along with classical music. Um, I'm not sure how far you could trace that back. It might, it might be one of the first to really, I guess, popularize it. Such a thing had had been used in later later films like Old Boy. By the way, don't watch 2013 Old Boy. Watch the good one, please. I think 2003. Conversations with other women. One of the most disappointing Blu-rays I've ever bought because uh, this movie. If you uh, go on YouTube and search up the trailer, and possibly there might actually be an upload of the entire movie on YouTube. Maybe. I don't know. Um, there's what's supposed to happen is the entire frame is 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 like the anamorphic widescreen. I think anamorphic. I don't know. It's 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 like a widescreen film, but the frame is split down the center, and on each half of the frame of widescreen, you have two different cameras. And so the movie was filmed with two cameras at once, showing an A camera and a B camera. There was editing used involved. It wasn't all one continuous read-through that was shot, but a lot of the reactions that the actors are having when talking to each other are actually reactions while they're talking to each other instead of just pretending that the take is going sort of thing. Um, without that feature, like that, that's basically the whole point of the movie is so that you can watch it like that. It's, it's an experimental way of filming and it worked out pretty great. That's the whole point of the movie. And every single Blu-ray release, and by that I mean it's only released on Blu-ray in Taiwan and Germany, and both of those 
uh, <laughs> instead of having the frame split down the center, which is what the DVD release has, uh, they used the shitty TV edit of the movie. So the director supposedly made a TV edit, and he made it so that people watching things in like 4 by 3 which is, I, I guess, like people didn't have widescreen TVs when... This was 2007. I don't know. I don't, I don't even fucking know why this happened, honestly. The director made a TV edit for the movie, and instead of having the two frames at once, they had uh, just one frame at a time. So a regular widescreen showing one character talking, and then what regular widescreen showing the character's reaction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It destroys the whole movie. I'm not even shitting you. People wind up buying this Blu-ray or watching a Blu-ray rip of it, and they watch it and they're like, this movie is not all that great. Why is it? Why are the reviews even decent? It's like, it's all right. It's not that much happens, but it like they're being exposed to a version of the film where literally there's n not that much of a point to the movie. Like, yes, it's still a decent story this way, but that's all it is, is decent with the original intent. That's what the entire script movie etc was designed around was that method of filming that was the whole fucking point to the movie but if you, you they won't sell it to you on blu-ray for whatever reason somehow i don't know how the director can sleep at night but somehow that tv edit was the only thing that made it to the blu-ray and it's in widescreen anyway so what the fuck why does that even exist it shouldn't have been made there should never have been an edit that went in direct opposition to the director's original uh uh vision for the film it ruins it buy the dvd if you if you want to watch this movie or watch a dvd rip whatever don't don't touch anything that had to do with any of the blu-rays because it's shit otherwise great movie uh crank hilarious hilarious movie uh really funny um self-aware it's 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 one of the prime examples for a movie that you can call self-aware. It knows exactly what it is. Uh, Neville Dean and Taylor are pretty great directors. I I like the um, kind of the low frame rate that they use with their cameras. Um, Crank Two is pretty much just fan service, by the way. Like they're they're not objectively amazing movies. They're not like an Oscar winner, um, but. And I mean, even Oscar winners aren't objectively amazing. Let's not get into that argument. Uh, they're so self-aware. They try to be exactly what they are. And that, I think, deserves something. And I, I enjoy them very much. These directors will literally put the cameras in danger. They will ride on the backs of motorcycles, like grab onto the back of a motorcycle with a camera in their hand on rollerblades to get certain shots. The camera will be like up close next to a wheel, like waving, swaying back and forth, where when they shoot a movie, they break shit tons of cameras shooting their movie just to get the shots. They're putting themselves in danger to get the shots. It's all super impressive. And I wish that more people could differentiate between a practical effect and something that was done in a studio with a green screen because it seems as though every time these guys make a fucking movie nobody appreciates what they do to get the shot they are some of the most misunderstood directors and people completely ignore every bit there is to appreciate about the movies that they make they don't make amazing movies they don't make amazing stories they make fun fun movies and fun is not objective fun is extremely sub subjective but there's a lot to appreciate about how they film it, regardless, in my opinion. Uh, Dance of Reality. Alejandro Jodorowsky's uh, new movie. He still got it. Did a great job. Check it out if you want to see something really weird. That I mean, it's, it's really interpretable. It's not a standard narrative. Uh, Dancer in the Dark. Like I said, uh, Japanese Blu-rays are Region A. This is the Japanese Blu-ray. Why do I have the Japanese Blu-ray? Because they didn't release it on Blu-ray anywhere but Japan. Why? It's 1080i, but still, I mean, like that's the best quality there is, I guess. Uh, depressing. Really depressing movie. <laughs> uh, check it out. Dawn of the Dead. Before George A. Romero 
ironically lost his brains. I just made that up. This is a really good movie. I'm going to grab another stack. Dawn of the Dead Director's Cut. No, not the same one from George A. Romero. This one's directed by Zack Snyder, and it has a strong and powerful independent female lead, and people still call him sexist because he made Sucker Punch. Uh, it was his first film. It's pretty decent. Uh, Death Race 1 and 2 Combo Pack. It was cheaper to buy the Combo Pack than it was to buy Death Race 2 on its own. Death Race 1, not worth owning. Death Race 2, uh, laughs forever. Endless entertainment. One of the most unintentionally gay movies ever made. So funny. Incredibly... Oh, God, my notes! Incredibly not self-aware. These are all my notes for th things that I'm making right now. Uh, incredibly not self-aware is what I was saying. Really funny movie. Thanks, Rule. Uh, the Descent, original unrated cut, a.k.a. the only ending worth watching. Fuck the American ending. Fuck it. Jesus Christ. Uh, Die Hard 1. Pretty cliched, but not when it was made. So it, it, it popularized what soon became cliches. So this movie's responsible for a lot of cliches. I don't think that a lot of the cliches in this movie were cliches when this was made. It's decently old. It's pretty good. I think, I think, it, I think it kind of made a genre in a sense. It's a good movie. Uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Cheesy as fuck. Notice how I skipped Die Hard 2. It's because I don't own it because it's a piece of shit. Uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Really cheesy. Cheesy as fuck. Uh, but not so bad. Also, casting Jeremy Irons as Alan Rickman's brother, one of the best casting decisions I've ever seen in a movie. Like, that's, that makes so much fucking sense. Uh, The Dirties. Uh, 93 out of 150 of these were ever made. And yes, it's a Blu-ray, and I know it's like a, a DVD case. This is the Blu-ray. It's a Blu-ray! And, uh... They wrote on it, and um, what's hilarious about this case is it's a direct parody. There, there are other cases that were made for this movie, other designs for, for the Blu-ray. Maybe there's still some available on the website. I don't know how many people bought this movie. It's good. Um, I made a quickie for it if you want to see it. Um, this is a direct parody of the Criterion Collection Rosemary's Baby Blu-ray, and... Uh, my thoughts on Rosemary's Baby, I haven't seen it in a while, but it's fucking great. It's really great. Uh, so I'll talk. I'll just leave that here for now. Uh, the Dirties. 93 out of 150. I like I like collecting physical media, especially when it's rare. And now I can say I have a collector's item. Oops, it's not sealed anymore. I ruined its value. Ha ha. <laughs> um, uh, they actually... Um, there, there's a... Uh, zip file that you can download from their website of an audio commentary for the movie Hook in 1991. Uh, the director of this movie is so fucking young, too. I think think he's in his 20s. But he stars in this movie as a teenager, and it makes it really convincing teenager, too. It's pretty great. I like it. I like it! You should watch it. Yes, unfortunately, it's a DVD case. It still fits on my shelf. But it's really funny that they, they parodied that cover. The other covers uh, that I was about to mention, there's one that parodies the Magnolia Blu-ray cover. There's one... There's a few different posters that they parody. And because of what's in the movie and because the characters in the movie are, like, film geeks, it makes sense. And there's a lot of, like, references to other films in the movie. It's a film lover's movie. Whether or not you love the film, it's made for people who love films. District 9. Yes... Everybody in the comments section. I know that this did the Inception wah, first. Inception popularized it, and no one's going to know what you're talking about if you say the District 9 wah, or whatever. Uh, so yeah, this, this gets the credit for doing it in its trailer and whatnot. Uh, but then Inception popularized it. And there was, there was purpose to it happening in Inception, too. There's a cool YouTube video showing um, how the score for Inception compared to a to a uh that's slowed a slowed down version of that edith piaf song that was used in the movie for them to uh 
wake up uh they're very similar so i can't i don't want to say that inception really um stole it because there was so like regardless of district nine existing there was so much purpose behind inception having it anyway so i'm i'm willing to believe that inception very well could have independently wound up doing that anyway it's debatable uh anyway Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Fantastic movie. It's 2007, I think, so that'll be on my list. Uh, Dogtooth. It was on my 2010 list. You can check that out. It's disturbing, but also hilarious. Doomsday. A film by Neil Marshall, the director of The Descent. Now, The Descent was a really great horror movie. Uh, Doomsday. It's really fun. In my opinion, it's not like it's dumb. It's stupid as fuck, but it's more. I don't know how to describe it. He had a lot of fun making it. That's for sure. Um, it's 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 one of those movies that I can put on if there's going to be people over that I know won't shut up during a movie. So like, if everyone's talking during the movie, nothing will be missed, and it's like what's visually happening is kind of entertaining. Drag me to hell. Uh, I really like it. It's a, it's a callback to Sam Raimi's Evil Dead trilogy in terms of form and presentation and humor. Um, and if you think about it, it's secretly a movie about a girl with an eating disorder. There's a lot of, uh, subtext. There's a lot of clues towards that. I think there's an article online, uh, kind of explaining it. Maybe I might make a video on it someday, but I think the information's already kind of out. Uh, so look it up. It's really cool. If you've seen the movie, um, I guess I, I don't know if that's really a spoiler. I wouldn't call it a spoiler. It might ruin some chances to interpretly independently, independently interpret it themselves. Oops. Uh, Drive. You all know about Drive. Drawn Together, the movie. Very childish humor. Uh, I enjoy Drawn Together. I know it's not good, but it's funny to me. It's really funny. Uh, and the audio commentary joke in the movie that you don't even have to turn the audio commentary on to witness. That was the best part. Eastern Promises. I still haven't seen it. It came in a three-pack of Blu-rays. There was other good movies in it. I still haven't seen it. Elena, Region B. It doesn't exist on Region A Blu-ray. If you want to watch a high-quality HD file of this movie and you don't own a Region B Blu-ray player or can't afford one, you're a criminal. You're a criminal and you're not allowed. We don't want to sell you what you want to buy. You're a criminal. El Dorado. I talked about this in my 2008 uh, review. Uh, this is region A, I believe, or region free, so no issues there. However, the spine of this is the exact opposite of the spine of every single other one of my Blu-rays, pretty much. So that pisses me off as an OCD degenerate. Uh, El Topo, Alejandro Hodorowski's other movie that I haven't seen in a while, but I remember really liking. Uh, Enter the Void, talked about it in my 2010 list. It was pretty high up. Definitely check it out. Uh, it's a little fucked up. Escape from Tomorrow, a Blu-ray that shouldn't exist of a film that reasonably shouldn't exist. They, they filmed the entire thing in Disneyland without Disneyland's permission. I made a quickie on it. Uh, I enjoy the movie. It's, I guess, a guilty pleasure because parts of it are a little sloppy and kind of shit. But after watching the special features on this and uh, learning that basically if they were even to show up, another day at Disneyland like they would have been kicked out anyway because they were definitely figuring out what they were doing after they had been there day after day filming shit uh after learning that it makes the shitty parts of this movie a little more forgivable like there's like not even a minute worth of scenes that are are like weird green screen when you would think like there's no reason for them to be green screened it's because when, when you try to reshoot something like that and you can't be in the location you need to be to reshoot it, you might just green screen it. So uh, 
it's self-aware it knows what it is it's not it's not pretending to be like a, a fantastic a movie with fantastic cinematography or anything like that uh i enjoyed it check it out uh eternal sunshine of the spotless mind one of my favorite movies of all time uh directed by michelle gondry and written by my favorite screenwriter charlie kaufman <clears throat> evil dead blu-ray most worthless blu-ray of my entire collection it's a piece of shit i want my money back they advertised this movie as the movie from 1980 something it's not it's not it's not it's not the same movie if you digitally edit over shit tons of your movie they george lucas it so in the dvd version of this which is much more valuable much better uh movie don't buy the remastered dvd if it has like the same cover as this don't even go for it the dvd you want to buy is the one where if you look at the special features on the back or online you can probably learn about special features before you buy them uh there's an audio commentary by bruce campbell and it's a solo audio commentary there's also an audio commentary by sam raimi raimi and i think uh rob tappert so they have their own commentaries there's two tracks one of them is Bruce Campbell solo. He actually won an award for that commentary. It's hilarious. It's the best commentary I've ever listened to. It's so fucking funny. And the majority of not only his commentary and Sam Raimi slash Rob Tappert's commentary is talking about parts of the movie that were goofs. So in one shot, you can see Rob Tappert hiding in the bushes. He's not supposed to be there. In one shot, you can see one of the tubes coming out of a, a face wound that's spurting the blood. In one shot, you can see the square uh, of, of a matte cutout of the moon that's so ridiculously big next to the cabin. They decided that for the Blu-ray release, for the, the fans of this movie that wanted to see the uh, 1080p version of this movie, you know, a, a remastered version, some a, a film restoration, like a 4K or 8K, whatever, of the actual film, they decided that they would not show the actual film. They decided that they would not give you the option to watch the actual film. Uh, they decided that they would digitally edit over so much of it. And for people that have never seen this movie before, maybe they might not notice. Uh, but to have your entire two tracks of audio commentary on your DVD be filled with references to those mistakes and references to that being a part of the movie being made and talking about why those mistakes were made and talking about the production of your movie and then just shitting on all of that and saying like, nope, didn't happen. No, let me watch the version of it. You restored it onto film before you made those edits. Where's that version? Why won't you sell it to me? I don't want this piece of shit. It's worthless. I, it's, there's, like, it doesn't have the same commentary anymore. Uh, the commentary that they have is new commentary with Sam Raimi, Rob Tappert, and Bruce Campbell. All in the same commentary. And I haven't listened to the whole thing, but I can't imagine they're, they're making any references to the mistakes that were digitally edited out. They fucking George lucas it. I lost respect for Sam Raimi because of this Blu-ray release. I'm not sure how much of it is his fault, but you should, you should assume that a Blu-ray with however many, like, what, 60 gigabytes that you can fit on there? Maybe 50? You could fit both versions of the movie on there. Don't fucking bullshit people like that. Don't pretend it's the same movie. It's not the same movie. You made a new movie. You made a new movie using the film from an older movie. Fuck you. Evil Dead 2. Nothing wrong with this Blu-ray. It's a funny movie. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, great movie. Fox Searchlight, one of the worst distributors of all time, was responsible for distributing this movie. For those of you who can't watch Birdman in theaters right now, you can thank Fox Searchlight for their terrible, shitty distribution job. Uh, although Birdman, yes, it, it got a wider release, Fox Searchlight decides that a movie has to have overwhelming uh, uh, attendance in order for it to have a decent, decent release. So for movies like Birdman, like this, Fantastic Mr. Fox, like Sunshine, uh, Slumdog Millionaire, I think even Napoleon Dynamite, those last two obviously got huge because of Oscars. Um, 
and I guess, no, Napoleon Dynamite didn't win an Oscar. It got huge on its own. So Napoleon Dynamite had overwhelming attendance, and then Fox Searchlight said, okay, now we can distribute it to lots of theaters. Now we'll make an advertisement for this movie. Did anybody remember seeing many advertisements for Fantastic Mr. Fox at all, or Sunshine? When Sunshine came out, it was in, like, one theater for a fucking week, you know? Fox Searchlight is the worst. If you are a filmmaker, and you make an independent film, and you are getting bids from uh, studios to distribute your film, do not go with Fox Searchlight unless you are absolutely confident that your attendance will be amazing for the film. Otherwise, they don't give a shit about you. They won't make an ad for you. There's all these insanely marketable movies like Birdman, like Fantastic Mr. Fox, like Sunshine that people would see if they knew about them, but people don't know about the movie unless you make an ad for the movie. People don't know about it unless you put as many trailers for it as as other movies, you know? You, you've got to put trailers out there. You've got to fucking do your job, Fox Searchlight. They're so marketable, and you're losing money. You're losing money! I'm gonna grab another stack. Uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Also, Criterion version. Criterion version's better. Any questions? Um... I don't know. I feel like I feel like you have to know what it's like to do drugs to enjoy the movie to its fullest extent, I guess. Still pretty great movie regardless. Although I, I I'd imagine that it's not as enjoyable if you've never done drugs. Frankenhooker on Blu-ray. Uh hilarious movie. Watch it. Self-aware, 1980s, etc. Uh Frankenhooker. Very self-descriptive. You kind of know what movie you're getting into when you watch Frankenhooker uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Very, uh, first half of the movie is not at all like the second half of the movie. Just saying, uh, it's pretty good. Fargo, great movie, Coen Brothers. Uh, Fight Club, stop asking me about Fight Club. It's a good movie, it's a, it's a, it's a little overrated, it's really good. You know, there's cer certain movies like this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, this is like, you can buy this for like six bucks now. That's that's a piracy deterrent, is reasonable prices. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Full Metal Jacket, Stanley Kubrick. Great movie. You all know Stanley Kubrick. Um, Funny Games. Kind of a polarizing movie, but I... Mentioned a lot about it in my uh, 2008 review. This is the U.S. version. So I guess the full title is Funny Games U.S., but it doesn't say U.S. on this cover for whatever reason. Probably because it was sold. Wait, no, I guess this... this. I don't know. This I guess this isn't the U.S. Blu-ray. This looks like... All, when you see something like this 18 symbol... I'm covering it with my thumb. 18 symbol, it usually means it's from the U.K. Because I think Peggy 18 is their thing. What does Peggy even mean? Anyway, this, uh, this is region-free. All regions, anyway. Gamer. From the people that made Crank. Hilarious, funny movie. Don't take it seriously. If you see a movie with a Lloyd Kaufman from Troma cameo in it, it's not supposed to be taken seriously. This has a cameo of, of Lloyd Kaufman in the movie. Lloyd Kaufman, famous for making really shitty low-budget movies that are funny that you're not supposed to take seriously. You are not supposed to take this seriously. Very much like uh, Doomsday, it's a movie that you can enjoy watching if you're in a room of people that won't shut the fuck up anyway. It's one of those perfect movies that you can show a crowd of people where you don't have to force people to pay attention. They can just ignore the whole thing and, and it'll... Like, you'll still get the movie, you know? Oh, God! Uh, Gattaca. Before, uh... What's his name? Andrew Nichol. Before he, uh, lost his brains. Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. Ghost Rider 2. Uh, yes, I bought the Blu-ray. Only when it became a little cheaper. This is the one movie... Um, by the way, whatever I said in my quickie, I, I retract it down to a 6 out of 10. And even 6 out of 10, people are going to say it's way too high for this movie. 
This movie, same directors as Gamer and Crank, you are not supposed to take it seriously. This, if, if you look at the featurettes before this movie came out, which I was all about. Sorry, I'm trying to get these little plastic things off. I don't know why that's still on there. Um, if you look at the featurettes before this movie came out, when they talk about using Nicolas Cage, they're talking about using Nicolas Cage as in the the vampire's kiss Nicolas Cage. They're using Nicolas Cage as, haha, it's a funny movie because Nick Cage is in it. They're purposefully going for aspects of, of like, cheese in the comedy. And it's... I feel like it's just really misunderstood. Because, again, what I was saying with... Um, with their movies the shot near the beginning of the film where the dude is i think they're like on a moat someone's on a motorcycle or something anyway some guy gets thrown off of a cliff and the camera is behind the guy on the cliff literally you you as an audience member are falling backwards off the cliff watching this guy as he's shooting and most people assume that that was done in a studio with a green screen. And it wasn't. They literally fucking had uh, them, the, the stunt man and the camera operator, which it was I, the actual director, one of the two directors. They had them both flying over a cliff. Obviously, they had um, harnesses and whatnot. But they were actually doing the stunts. And so many people see these stunts and think... That it's so fabricated, but it's not. Another part about this movie that's so much better than the first is they actually got Nicolas Cage to do the mocap. I guess you could call it mocap. Um, they got him to perform as the Ghost Rider. And so all of Nicolas Cage's nuances and quirkiness that there is to him and all of his, like, haha, funny Nicolas Cage-ness, he got to actually act and he got to actually perform the Ghost Rider. If you look at the first movie, so fucking shitty CG. Uh, the Ghost Rider, uh, the skull skeleton is just like all out of mercy, and it's it's on a it's like on a hinge. There's no human characteristics to its movement whatsoever. They didn't even really use mocap. It it seemed like it was all just like there was no there was no mocap involved in the first movie. In this one. Ghost Rider, so much more intimidating in, in the way he, he walks. Yes, it's a shit movie, but it's self-aware and it knows it's shit. It's not, it's not good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, like, I can call this a guilty pleasure, but to call it out on things that it's going for is, I think, unfair. And in before people say that this ruins my credibility... Because I'm defending this movie in any way, even though I'm saying it's not really, it's not really good. But I'm defending it because they're misunderstood directors. Ghost Rider by Roman Polanski. Check out my 2010 review. By the way, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, not making my best of the year list, just saying. So don't act as though it's like something I stand by as a film, like the best movie of all time. No, I enjoy watching it. And I think that there's unfair criticism when it comes to the movie and a lot of people don't even understand what they're watching no it's not like too intelligent it's just like nobody actually sees the effort that goes into the camera work and and the stunts that they do in their movies and it pisses me off uh grand piano guilty pleasure same this is written by the guy who then wrote and directed whiplash which is one of the best films that came out this year 2014 um so this this is pretty good. It's check out a trailer. You'll know what you're getting into. It's not going to be on my best of the year list. Grindhouse, complete with uh, the fake trailers and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I watched this movie so many fucking times in theaters, and by movie I mean movies, because it was a double feature. I watched it so many fucking times in theaters, dragging different friends along, and it was such a great theater experience. I want to watch the Blu-ray at some point and. Uh, have some friends over or something so I can kind of relive, relive it even though it's not really in theaters. Halo Legends. 
There was a point in time where I would just buy anything that said Halo on it. This was the first Blu-ray that said Halo on it, so I bought it before I watched it. Eh, all right, it wasn't really good. I'm never gonna watch it again ever. Uh, Happy Feet. I made my analysis video on this. If you want to check it out, talked about the anti-religious symbolism, etc. Uh, good movie. It's good. It's good for a kids movie. It's not like amazing. I think that the music was well done. Some people hate it. I whatever. It's not like an art film. This is an art film. Her directed by Spike Jones. Uh amazing movie from 2013. Uh Check out my 2013 list if you want to see more thoughts on that. And my 2013 list will be out in April of 2015. If you don't know why I wait that long to make a uh yearly list, check out my 2011 review where my number one movie literally came out a month before I released the uh the video so it came out on blu-ray like a month before I released the video so that's why holy mountain my favorite movie of all time check it out I would like to make an analysis video on it but first I'm making one for Synecdoche New York which is my second favorite movie of all time the host not the bad one the good one Guelmol directed by uh Boon, Bong Joon Ho. I always say Boon Jung Ho. It's Boon, fuck Bong Joon Ho. He's a great director. Every movie he's made has been great. Debatably, Snowpiercer is great. I didn't think it was that great. A lot of people think it's great. There's great parts about it. I just I didn't like a lot of the cheesiness. Hot Fuzz. You all know Hot Fuzz. Go check it out. It's a great movie. A great action parody movie. How Su. This is one of those movies where. I checked it out based on the cover alone. Now I have a t-shirt with this on it as well. I'm considering getting the poster off the Criterion website. I, I mentioned this in my uh, underrated horror movies review at the end of it. And uh, it's really fucked up. It's, uh, it's quite the trip. And I would recommend it. Hunger by Steve McQueen. His first feature length film. Same director I was talking about that directed 12 Years a Slave. And uh, I would highly recommend it. I talked about it in my 2009 review. The Hunt. My... S this was 2012, wasn't it? Second favorite film of 2012. I think it's 2012. Yeah, it's 2012. Second favorite movie of 2012. Go check it out. Uh, it was a little difficult to track down a Blu-ray of this for Region A, but I got it online. If you're wondering where to buy Blu-rays for your region or where to buy hard to find blu-rays always go on the internet physical stores don't fucking carry blu-rays anymore and the selection's shit <clears throat> i am love check out my 2010 review to hear my thoughts on it but i really liked it uh itchy the killer really messed up really messed up uh takashi Mike. he's hit or miss He's really hit or miss. Audition was same director. This is uh, a lot more campy and not as serious. Incendie in my 2010 list to check it out if you want. Uh, yeah, not much to say about that. Uh, Inglorious Bastards and it's spelt wrong. However you want to spell it, Quinty. <laughs> Quinty. <laughs> I want to call him that from now on. Quinty. It was good. Uh, it's all got Pete Tong. Underrated, I would say. It didn't really get that much recognition. Uh, anybody who is familiar with like DJing would enjoy this movie. It's not about Pete Tong. Pete Tong's name is in the title. I don't think Pete Tong's really... Was he in the movie? Like, it's just one of those like small cameos? I don't remember. Um... It's an inspirational comedy, but it's not, it doesn't, it's not like really extremely lighthearted in its presentation. Uh, there's a lot of heavy drug use going on with some of the characters and um, it's really funny. I, I enjoy the movie. <clears throat> I've loved you so long. I talked about this in my 2008 review, Jackass 3, because I can enjoy movies that don't have intelligent substance also it's funny jackass 2 was easily the best one 
but that one is not on Blu-ray. If you want to watch Jackass 2 in HD, um, I think there's like a 720p iTunes uh, download or something, but they won't sell me the Blu-ray. It exists in HD, but I'm not allowed to own a Blu-ray of it. Kid with a Bike, that movie I was talking about, my favorite of 2011, this Blu-ray came out in, I think, March of 2013. Yeah, March of 2013. And uh, I released my best of the year reviews in April. And yeah, you can say it's excessive, but seriously, I would, like, my favorite fucking movie of the year, and I wouldn't have had a Blu-ray copy of it before the list was made, and I like to use footage for my reviews. So how can I do that without a Blu-ray? Kill Bill, Volume 1. I love Kill Bill. Uh, one of my favorite Quentin Tarantino movies. I judge them both as one movie, and it was supposed to be one movie anyway. Uh, I don't even, like, even judging them as separate movies, I'm, I'm not even sure I would say that the first one is better than the second one. They're just too, like they're they feel so connected. They they don't feel like two separate movies. Like they feel the same. And my rating for them should be the same. Uh, I'll grab another stack. Kill Bill Volume Two. I just talked about Volume One, and therefore I just talked about Volume Two. But <laughs> killing them softly. Why why do some people think that this is a shit movie? Like I get it. It feels it feels disingenuous based on the poster and maybe like the advertisements maybe you thought that you were getting a different movie i don't see any like real objective reason not to like it i still want to see andrew dominic's uh first movie um the assassination of jesse james by the coward robert <laughs> rob ford <laughs> robert ford uh still haven't seen that yet i was actually an extra in it I, I was an extra in a Brad Pitt movie because that was filmed in Edmonton and I used to live there. It was filmed in Fort Edmonton Park. And uh, yeah, that's in, that's in Alberta, Canada. I don't live there anymore. Anyway, I was like 13. I don't think I made it into the final cut of the film. My parents watched it at one point and they said they didn't see me. I was only there for one day of filming. Uh, so I, I don't know. I walked past the, the camera a few times. I know that but I can't tell what part of it they used. I was pretty far away from the action taking place. Anyway, it was a cool experience to be on set, uh, on the set of a movie as an extra. Free food and whatnot. Uh, I still haven't seen it. I feel like it's weird that I was in a movie and I haven't seen it. I'll get to it. It's like, what, 2007? I'm making my 2007 list next year at some point, so I'll get to it. Kung Fu Panda. A lot of, you know, it's not as bad as a lot of um, animated kids movies. And I appreciate that they actually had some good fight scenes in it. Um, very rarely do you see a martial arts oriented uh, animated kids movie. And like, like even if there's implied martial arts or fighting in an animated kids movie... It's never actually done well, and and in this movie that like they actually gave a shit, and decided to have some really cool cinematography and and really um, I guess like crisp and effective sound effects and and just the presentation was really nice. Uh, I don't like how one of the characters like died and kind of didn't die. That was weird. Um, <laughs> uh. It was good. I'll watch it again. The Lego Movie, one of the biggest surprises of 2014. Did not expect that this movie would be so great. Check it out. It's got social commentary. It's very well written. It's it's great for everybody. Hey, included with my digital purchase is Ultraviolet. Redeem code by June 17th, 2017. Because you buying the Blu-ray when the price lowers means that you're not allowed to have a digital copy. You have to rip it from the Blu-ray onto your computer. But if you do that, you're a criminal. Fuck you. Leon, the professional. Uh, 
some weird, I guess, pedophilic undertones. Is that the right word? Pedophilic? Uh, it's a good movie, though. Natalie Portman, like, gave a really fantastic child performance. Children always fucking suck, but Natalie Portman was a really good child actor in that movie. Uh, let the right one in. In my 2008 review, you can listen to what I have to say about that. The Lion King, my favorite animated movie of all time. Uh, it's my any mood movie. I can be in any mood in the world. I could be sad. I could be happy, etc. And it'll still be an enjoyable movie, and I'll I'll still love it. It's like I, I've got a bit of a bias, uh, nostalgia or otherwise, uh, th that I, I guess you know. Yes, I'm a little biased when it comes to this movie, but although it's not perfect, I still think that it's the best animated kids movie ever made. Uh, a lot of you might disagree and say that some Pixar movies are. Uh, I disagree. I think The Lion King is the best. And not just the actual songs that were written by Elton John and Tim Rice, but the actual score by Hans Zimmer is possibly the best score he's ever made the the actual not not the songs with lyrics but the songs in the movie the you know just download the soundtrack uh animation quality is fantastic especially for 1994 um the casting of, of jeremy irons as, as scar was also fantastic uh if if you could give an award for voice acting at the oscars he would have gotten it because like, every character sounded, like, more or less like a human being that was playing, that, that was being visually represented as a lion. Whereas Jeremy Irons' Scar, in his vocal performance, there was so much ferocity to it. There was, there were so many little, um, he, he just did a fantastic job. Just pay attention to his actual vo vocal performance in it. Every, every single actor was cast extremely appropriately. And, um, any, any issues I have with the film are extremely, extremely minimal. Lord of the Rings. The trilogy, not the extended trilogy. I don't know if I'll ever watch the extended trilogy because I'm happy with the trilogy. I'm happy with it. I like it. I don't know if I want to watch the extended versions. It seems like too much. They're already pretty long. Uh, Lord of War. Before Andrew Nichol lost his brains. Uh, one of Nicolas Cage's better movies, for sure. He's pretty good in it. Jared Leto is also pretty good. Man, The Man from Earth. Might be in my 2007 list. Uh, <clears throat> from an acclaimed writer of the original Star Trek and The Twilight Zone comes a story that transcends both space and... I mean, time and space. Who is the writer? Jerome Bixby. So yeah, he was he's an acclaimed writer of the original Star Trek and The Twilight Zone, and he made a really he made a really really good dialogue-driven movie. The presentation is a little eh, like like it, it it on a surface level it seems like shit. It really does. And watching it, it's like TV quality actors and the like if you don't give it a chance, you might just turn it off within the first five minutes because it seems like a little cheesy in its presentation. The camera, like there's nothing released to the cinematography, but the movie's so incredibly well written and it's so dialogue based anyway that cheesiness from the performances, you can kind of overlook that. And um, it's it's one of the more, it, it's one of the best written movies ever, I think. I don't know. I have to watch it again recently. There's not too much of a point to owning it on Blu-ray, although scratch protection. Aw, yeah. You can't ruin it unless you try. Um, like I said, the camera quality isn't that great, but it's it's worth a watch. It's worth watching more than once, even. Um, it's a really cool story to watch unfold, and it's pretty pretty much the whole movie is just people in a room talking, and there aren't that many movies that have successfully pulled that off. <clears throat> Manhattan was given to me as a gift. Still haven't watched it. I'm a horrible person with no respect. I would like to watch it. Woody Allen, right? 
<clears throat> Martyrs. Uh, this Blu-ray has English subtitles. And I'm happy about that because the first time I bought this movie, it was on eBay and it did not have English subtitles. And so then I, I had like I had a French movie that I couldn't watch with English subtitles. And uh, this version didn't exist. So I had to wait a while for this version to come out. Uh, otherwise, DVD was pretty much the only option. I was pr I'm pretty sure at the time DVD was the only option if you wanted to have English subtitles. So uh, <clears throat> torrenting that movie, even though I bought it, that's illegal. So I didn't do it. Um, by the way, extremely disturbing movie. Check it out if you want to be disturbed. It was on my underrated horror movies list. Mary and Max from my 2009 list. One of my favorite animated movies, honestly. It's, it's one that it's not really for kids. It's not extremely profane, but it's not really for kids. And it's really emotional. It's stylistic. Maybe they play that one song a little too many times. Um, but I think it's great, and you should check it out. Matrix Collection. Uh, I really love the first movie, and I'm trying, I'm trying to find a moment in time where I can revisit the sequels because in my memory, watching them as as like a 15 year old, maybe I don't know. In my memory, the sequels don't seem that bad, and I understand that they don't go for the same thing as the original movie. Maybe I'll watch them again more recently and and hate them as much as everybody else does but in my memory they're not that bad so i kind of want to revisit them soon so i bought all of them again the animatrix blu-ray is on there too i love the animatrix out of every every kind of movie that is like an an anthology anime movie that i've seen like the halo legends thing is an anthology anime sort of thing animatrix probably the best one out there in my opinion it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, Memento. Uh, one of my favorite movies ever. It was my favorite movie when I was like 17 or 18, maybe. It was my favorite movie. And um, I guess it's bumped down a few spots because I've just enjoyed other movies more since then. But uh, Memento is fantastic, and I love the way it's shot. I love the chronology. I, I love the purpose towards the decisions made in the film. Uh, I love the purpose towards the black and white versus color scenes and the order in which they show up in the film. Um, I like it. And, and, and the fact that they showed it like that, um, not just black and white, but the uh, different chronology the fact that they showed it like that, it could have happened in any movie, but it had the most purpose in this movie where the main character uh, suffers from a condition where he has no short-term memory. So I, I like seeing things with purpose. When there's a decision being made that's, goes incre that, that's incredibly different that, from what is standard to a film, it means the most when there's a reason behind it. And it's not just cause like I'm Lars von Trier making nymphomaniac. Look at these numbers appearing on the screen. There's relevance to it, but I'm not going to explain it. I'm not even sure I understand it, but I'll just say that it was on purpose. Uh, Memories of murder by bong. <laughs> Jun Ho, and that's all I'll remember it from now on. Uh, I haven't finished this movie, but I bought it because I love his other movies so much, and because I, it was an import from South Korea, and, you know, if a movie is that poorly distributed to begin with, then I might not be able to buy it in the future. Um, it has English subtitles, so you just gotta, like, guess what menu option means what in the butt and then figure out how to play the movie also there's usually options like the triangle button on the ps3 will just let you uh uh it'll, it'll show the subtitle list anyway uh i didn't stop watching it because i didn't like it it was just like i was tired um it was one of those times where i probably shouldn't have started a movie when it was too late uh but thankfully you know chapter selections exist unless uh you it's a david lynch dvd that you bought I'll never forgive him for that. 
Gonna grab another stack. All right, I'm gonna do this one on its own because it's like the cornerstone and holding a lot of weight uh, on my shelf because there's a flimsy little piece of cardboard. So now those other Blu-rays are holding that weight. So I'm just gonna put this one back before I grab more. Uh, the Michael Haneke uh, collection, uh, my favorite director, obviously I would buy this. Uh, unfortunately, Region B. Uh, so it, it, it was only released in France. Hopefully it gets released other places too. You can buy it off Amazon. Um, so the biggest uh, perk towards getting this collection is it has all of his films on Blu-ray. Uh, all of his films had not been on Blu-ray before this point. Before this point, it was like Cache, Funny Games US, uh, The White Ribbon, uh, Amour, Amour, and... I don't remember if there there were any other ones. I guess I could just look on this one and just know from memory. Uh, yeah, I think those were the only ones that uh, that were on Blu-ray before. So now his entire catalog of older movies that I've already seen, except for um, except for Le Chateau. Uh, now they're in HD, and I like I like seeing things in HD. And the biggest. Um, selling point for blu-rays for me was when i was at a friend's house that had a blu-ray player and i was watching requiem for a dream and uh i noticed a tear on ellen bernstein's face that bursting i don't remember how to pronounce her last name uh it was on her face and it kind of changed the context to the scene to me because on the dvd version on my shit tv i never noticed that tear on her face and so i i, I noticed it when I was watching the Blu-ray, I'm like, the scene has kind of a different meaning t to me now. I feel like I have more context to it, and I feel like I'm now seeing everything the director intended for me to see in the frame. That's how you should always watch a movie, is the way that the director wants to show it. So that's why I love Blu-ray, and that's why I love that his films, all of his older ones, are finally on Blu-ray. However, I'm going to issue a disclaimer about this. First off, if you don't have a Region B Blu-ray player... You're a criminal if you want to watch these in HD. You're not allowed. Uh, but, uh, so, for whatever fucking reason, l l pisses me off a little. Uh, the A lot of these movies don't actually have English subtitles. And I knew this before buying it. But the ones that don't have English subtitles for this collection are also released on Blu-ray by themselves. However, there is one fucking movie in this collection that does not have English subtitles that does not have a Blu-ray release, and that's The Piano Teacher. And it's the f favorite movie, my favorite movie of his that had not been released on Blu-ray before this collection. So if I want to watch it in HD, I need to download a 1080p Blu-ray rip of the movie that, if you look online, already has the English subtitles from the DVD release already attached to them. If I want to watch the movie I bought with English subtitles... English subtitles existed! I had it on DVD. I don't know what's so hard about that. Is it, is it a licensing thing? Don't you already own the rights to license the movie? Why would you own the rights... To license it to the, why would you own a license to distribute the movie but not the subtitle file for it? No one has a copyright on the file that they wrote. Maybe like a, you got to give proper credit or something. I don't know why they would do that. Like every single fucking movie on here that doesn't have sub English subtitles has English subtitles in a DVD release. So I'm a little bit pissy about that. I wish that they would release The Piano Teacher as a Blu ray so I can watch the Blu ray and that I don't have to download a 12 gigabyte 1080p rip of someone doing the simplest task in the world and just taking the subtitle file from the DVD and putting it on there. My favorite director, though. Uh, so, obviously I bought it. I want to have another marathon of his movies. I watched most of his mov movies in the same 24 hours uh, because I had watched enough of his movies, like a few of them, to know, like, holy shit, this guy's fantastic. And so then I ordered all those DVDs off of eBay 
except the seventh continent, which I didn't think had a standalone DVD. It might not have. I don't remember. Um, not the seventh continent. Fuck. What is that movie? The castle, the schlob, le chateau. Um, anyway, to go with this, uh, one of my subscribers, uh, who lives in Vienna messaged me on Reddit saying that he saw my favorite director at a cafe and that would have been the end of the conversation. But since I realized that the message was sent, uh, not very, like, was sent recently, like, in the past, like, five minutes of me reading it, I told him to go up to him and get a signature, an autograph for me. And he did. And uh, this is the autograph of my favorite director that got mailed to me. And I'm really happy about that. So thank you, Alexander. I don't know if there's an Austrian way to pronounce your name. Um, it says... Uh, Adam Johns instead of my whole name. So anyway, I've, I've checked out the uh, other autographs that he's given of people holding it up to the camera and whatnot, and it looks really fucking legit. I don't think I was trolled, and the fact that I asked him to go do it and he didn't message me with that idea gives, I guess, some validity to it. And he seems like a nice guy. I don't think he would do that. Uh, but I'm happy about it. I hope that I get to meet him someday, but unfortunately, I mean, he doesn't have that, that much time left, and I don't think I'm going to be in Austria anytime soon. I'm going to grab another stack. Cosi fan tutti. I'm pronouncing this wrong, guaranteed. It's an opera, stage directed by my favorite director. And so uh, I bought it because I'll buy anything that's associated with him because he's my favorite director. Haven't seen it yet. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'll, I'll watch it in my next, uh, Michael Hanukkah marathon. Milk was pretty good. It wasn't amazing. Uh, but I bought it cause I worked at Blockbuster and it was really cheap to buy. Best piracy deterrent, honestly, is, is just reasonable prices and easy accessibility and proper distribution. Piracy goes down when you do those things. Just FYI. Uh, Moon. Great film directed by Duncan Jones. It's in my 2009 list if you want to hear more about it. Duncan Jones is also David Bowie's son. He also directed Source Code, which has one of the most disappointing endings ever filmed in an entire movie ever. And uh, by disappointing, I don't mean depressing for the characters. I mean it was a really shitty ending to an otherwise pretty good movie. Uh, he's directing the new Warcraft movie. It's being filmed in Vancouver. I'll see it. Let's check it out. Uh, Moonrise Kingdom. This is really cheap right now. So I got this one recently because it was really cheap. Uh, 20, 2012, I guess. It was on, it's on my 2012 list. Wes Anderson. Monsters, Inc. Pretty good for a Pixar movie. Oh, Jesus. I mean, it's, it's one of their better ones. Um, I bought it. I worked at Blockbuster when I bought it. So it was like a rental copy. So it's like disc one, but no disc two. Whatever. Um, I remember though on the special features, cause I, I had the, um, I rented the DVD when it came out with my parents and, and I just lost my shit cause on the special features, it had a Japanese segment of, um, like Mike and Sully and Boo for like a, a TV promo, but instead of Boo, it was bad. And I just found it to be the funniest fucking thing on the planet when I was like, how old was I when I, this came out? If this came out in, like, what? 2000... What? It had to have been 2001 or something. Like, this Blu-ray says 2009, but that's because it got released on Blu-ray. Yeah, 2001 uh, Academy Awards for their short. I don't... I don't fucking know. I'm not going to talk about this. This is wasting time. Uh, Mother, directed by... <sighs> Bong Joon Ho. Great movie. I also talked about this in my 2009 review. Um, Mysterious Skin, finally on Blu ray. I never thought it would get a Blu ray release. I'm surprised as fuck that it got a Blu ray release. Um, fantastic movie. Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, in, in one of his like earliest roles, still does a great job. It's really disturbing. It's not a, it's not a movie you want to watch with your parents kind of thing, and there's a lot of like gay shit going on um but it's really good really really well made and uh 
same director as Smiley Face, even though those movies, this and Smiley Face, are like completely different movies. Speaking of Smiley Face, no Blu-ray release, but there's a a uh, HD rip of a, um, I guess a, an HD TV screening. So if you want to watch it in HD, you're a criminal. We're not gonna sell you the product you want to buy. You're a criminal. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. I like it a lot. Some people hate it. The music's really great, in my opinion. Uh, animation's really great. It's, like, not an amazing story, but the music and animation are pretty great. Nightmare on Elm Street collection. What was I saying about piracy deterring? Uh, this was, like, 20 bucks for seven movies. What I was hoping, though, is, um, these are all, like, I watched these movies a lot when I was a kid. Now look at me. Um, part six, there's a really funny part in part six where the character, I shit you not, the character in the film puts on shitty red and cyan 3D glasses to cue the audience members to put on their 3D glasses. She goes into the dream world. She's like, you need these. And it says 3D and it's like made of paper and plastic. The character's doing this. It's so fucking funny. I wish... Jesus Christ, I wish that they released uh, a Red and Cyan 3D viewable version of Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6. Uh, but no, I checked this Blu-ray. It's not It's not 3D. There's no option to watch it. Damn it. Anyway, these movies are kind of funny. Might review them someday, might not. Uh, no Country for Old Men. Fantastic Coen Brothers movie. That'll be on my 2007 video next year. Uh, once. Probably also going to be on my 2007 video next year. Uh, I really love the music in this movie. If you don't love the music, which a lot of people find it to be great music, me, me included. If you don't love the music in this movie, there isn't all that much to the movie. It's a little hipstery. Um, the characters are still fun to watch and, and see what they go through, but it's not all that eventful. It's kind of like a, a really, it's like a feature length music video it's like they released an album as a movie in a sense it's a musical but it's not like they're singing for no reason they're just people that are recording songs their characters are, are recording an album sort of thing pandorum very underrated got bashed by the critics for whatever reason dennis quaid's in it he doesn't ruin it uh ben foster's in it i love ben foster he's a very underrated actor um and uh I mean, it's clearly inspired from a lot of things like Resident Evil even, and same producers as Resident Evil. So why not? Um, it's clearly inspired from The Descent. They kind of like, I don't want to talk about how it's inspired from The Descent because that might spoil The Descent for people that haven't watched The Descent. Um, but I think Pandorum was pretty good. I liked, I liked where the story went. It's not amazing, but it was on my underrated horror movie thing. And I think it's underrated. Um... Was this Fox Searchlight? No, it was Alliance. Because I, I don't know if this got a poor distribution. I just think it wasn't advertised very well. I just think that there weren't a lot of trailers. Maybe just people didn't want to see it or something. I saw it in theaters, and it didn't do too well. It, it lost a lot of money, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, Pan's Labyrinth, absolutely fantastic. Guillermo's best movie he's ever made, I think. I haven't seen... A lot of his older stuff in Criterion. Um, although that one with that ghost boy that I forget the name of, I didn't think that was that good. Uh, still haven't seen Pacific Rim. Everybody asked me about that. Paranormal Activity, the first one. Bought this when I was working at Blockbuster. And uh, <laughs> yeah, disc one, no disc two again. Um, it was good for what it what it tried to do. It was um, a good low budget movie with low budget effects that didn't seem so low budget in in their effects i guess what was it like eleven thousand dollars or some shit i don't remember it was stupid low budget and what they were able to do with that budget was impressive i think <clears throat> passive glory you know a lot of you uh film buffs and maybe if uh tony from every frame a painting decided to watch this video he might say the, he might take issue with the fact that most of my movies that 
I own and that I enjoy are very, very recent. I really want to get into a lot of older films because I, I enjoyed this very much. And I'll be keeping an eye on a lot of Criterion releases that I want to sort of keep up with. Um, but, I mean, I just, there's not enough time in my day. I really need to see a lot of older films. I really do. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I just need to, I need to set aside the time to do it because there's so much stuff coming out currently and so many things that I haven't seen currently that it's it's difficult to try and fit everything on my plate so I'm doing my top 10 of the years go in both directions so 2013 and 2007 coming next year and then or, or, like 2015 and then 2014 and 2006 coming 2016 so eventually i'll see every movie ever made assuming i live that long i don't think i'm gonna make it that far in, into the past but i really want to see a lot of older hitchcock movies i really want to see some ingmar bergman i really want to see like i saw persona i enjoyed that i want to see um the seventh seal i'm really excited for that i need more time like i i understand a lot of the context to the films and, and a lot about them, but I still need to really experience them, I think. Paths of Glory, 1950s by Kubrick. Great movie. Gotta say, really, really great movie. Uh, the Pianist. You all know about The Pianist. Adrian Brody, like, youngest Oscar winner for that role. He doesn't have to do a good job ever again. He's earned it. He's earned it. He earned that Oscar. He earned my respect forever adrian brody what a champ uh and also it's really well directed everything about it is pretty great it's you can't you can't deny that that's a great movie i think uh poultry geist made by lloyd kaufman of troma i think this was the first blu-ray they've ever released and um it's hilarious it was on my underrated horror thing and uh it's not it's not it's not an art movie. It's not good. It's funny bad. So check it out if you like funny bad. Prisoners. Very underrated. Fantastic movie. It'll be on my 2013 thing. Uh, Pulp Fiction. Just recently got this on Blu-ray. Super cheap. I think it was like 10 bucks. Um, I need to... I still haven't seen it on Blu-ray, but it's something that, like, it needs to be a part of my collection just because I love the movie so much. Um... The Rabbi's Cat. This was on my 2011 video. You can check that out. Ratatouille. You know what? I don't know why people don't like Ratatouille that much. Some people, like, people act as though it's not one of Pixar's better movies. I think, like, debatably, it's Pixar's best movie. I think that it worked really well. And yes, there's nonsensical aspects to it, like a fucking rat controlling someone by their hair. But at no point does it ever play it off as though... You, it's like, oh, you're supposed to accept it and there's a real reason for it. They don't do, like, fake mumbo-jumbo movie science. They don't, like, pretend to understand it. The characters that are experiencing it are just as flabbergasted, but they're like, well, it's happening, you know? That's the correct way you should approach nonsense in a movie is not pretend that it isn't nonsense, like a lot of movies do, and, and you know, it just makes... It makes me feel as though they think I'm stupid when they try to pretend as though it's not nonsense. When a movie is self-aware, which is what Ratatouille is, uh, they can present it in a way where they know it's nonsense, and it's okay. Nonsense can be okay. Things that don't make sense can be okay in a movie. When you present it as though they do make sense, that's when it's not okay. The intent matters the most. It has to be self-aware. That's, that's what matters a lot to me in a movie. Uh, reality. This was in my 2012, uh, list. Uh, one, one detail that I didn't mention about the movie. The main actor in this movie, actually a, uh, convicted criminal. And the director of the movie found him when he was, uh, in, like, a prison play. And so this guy used to be a part of the Italian mob, and he murdered people, and, and then... I guess, like, he rehabilitated himself in a way that he could, you know, I, I guess vent out his frustrations through art, and he found acting, and even though he was in a prison, 
could never really do anything with it. The director found him in a prison. And so you get to see a murderer play the main character, uh, which is kind of interesting. I didn't put that in my review for my um, 2012 video because I didn't want people to be like, oh, I don't want to watch the movie because there's a murderer in it. Um, I mean, if if putting people in jail is supposed to rehabilitate them and that's the point, then... I mean, like, obviously, murdering people is horribly wrong, and I'm not defending that in any way, but, I mean, you can still you can still act in a movie, and the movie can still be good. Like, I don't know if he's making commission off it. This is a really well-directed movie, and um, it's really well-written. Um, possibly the only Blu-ray that I own from, uh, what is this? Uh, Oscilloscope Laboratories. Really, really nice packaging. I love all this cardboard, all the art from scenes in the film. Super, super awesome to look at. One problem, uh, the Blu-ray itself. <laughs> look at this. Oscilloscope with the small, small uh, text saying the title of the movie at the top. Reality. I wish that the disc was more reality and less oscilloscope. But it's still really uh, nicely designed. I love the packaging. I love, you know, the, I, when when you put effort into a physical release, it makes it much more appealing. You know, so it's mm, that texture. Ten out of ten. Uh, 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 wreck. This was in my um. I made a movie. I, I made a. Pfft, I made a review about uh, quarantine versus wreck. But I think you should just watch this movie before you watch that. And that review is really old, really fucking old. And my style was not my own at that point. Um, I hadn't really developed my reviews at that point. And uh, I, I talked about. Oh yeah, did I put this in my? I did. I did. I put it in my 2008 video, didn't I? I did. You should watch my 2008 video. Wreck, uh, I'm gonna grab another stack. Wreck 2, still great. Uh, maybe not as great as the first one. There are parts of it that are even better than the first one. But there's parts of it that, you know, aren't amazing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, don't, don't even watch Wreck 3. Wreck 4 is coming out really soon, and that looks like it's gonna be a giant piece of shit. Don't even watch Wreck 3. It's an insult. Um... Red versus blue. Ten seasons Blu-ray. And um, Red versus blue is a very significant part to my childhood. I remember watching Red versus blue on the Rooster Teeth website back when um, it, it was like there was no even there was no web player. It was like you had Windows movie or Windows media player installed and their video files would be on the website and you would download a WMV file of an episode and then watch it. And um, <clears throat> I remember even that original trailer that they had for it that I can't fucking find anywhere anymore that was like, a, a, it, it pretended it was super serious and it was like, blah, 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 covenant, blah, blah, blah. And then it just ended with like some cock bite joke or whatever, which if you think about it, rooster teeth, cock bite, get it? Um... So the, yeah, th this is a relevant part to our internet online video history. It's a relevant part to every gaming video on YouTube ever made, the history of that, you know? It, it's, I don't know if this was the f first instance of machinima, as in, as, uh, as in like animating, um, animating using a video game, not a video game engine, but literally um, just moving a, character's head up and down sort of thing it was born out of a glitch where um in halo if you if you look down too far your head goes back up so they were able to have their arms down and not facing like not pointing guns at each other while they spoke but still have their heads bob up and down and talk and it was born out of that glitch and um season two my favorite um the I, I've watched all the way up until I think season nine. So in this Blu-ray collection, I still haven't seen season ten, but I kind of want to watch through through the whole thing uh, again with somebody just to like refresh myself before watching season ten. Anyway, I never really watched the episodes online. The episodes are like five minute 
episodes each, but they work so well as like a, a full feature. They just happen to. I, I mean, I doubt that they planned their seasons as full features, but when they released them on DVD, it was just like um, they just happen to work and fit within a like hour and 15 to three hour sort of time restraint each season. Um, the writing, uh, Bernie, Bernie Burns, I think his name is, um, pretty, pretty good writing for what it is, uh, especially considering how much callback there is to previous material in the, in its own series. Uh, I think around season nine, there's just a major fucking, uh, mind fuck game changer and I'm not going to spoil anything but it's like what they call back everything that they say just begins to make so much sense even more sense under just the previous um, context to what you thought was happening in, in a sense it's like they rewrote the show's own history without really contradicting itself too much which is an amazing feat I think in writing and um it's not for everybody. I mean, it's, um, you know, it, it's a little nostalgic for me, uh, but I like it. And I like Rooster Teeth. Uh, they've got a good YouTube channel, etc. Achievement Hunter, whatnot. I would like to go to RTX one day. Hey, Rooster Teeth, make me a guest of honor, please. Invite me to the convention and make me there for free. Uh, everybody listening to this YouTube video right now, you should also contact other conventions and tell them to make me a guest of honor and then I can go there for free. You know, I can do a panel and talk about being an asshole on the internet and how fun that is. Uh, yep. <clears throat> Requiem for a Dream. I already gave my story about that one. I think it's a great movie. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, my voice dies when I do this for too long. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. Great movie by Quinty. <laughs> uh, Revanche. This was in my... Am I pronouncing that right? This was in my 2008 list. Criterion. Gotta love Criterion. The Room. Apparently, if I didn't order it on Amazon and I ordered it through the actual website, I would have gotten an autographed copy. But since everybody's getting an autograph copy, then I guess mine's the real collector's edition because it's the autograph-free version owned. You all know about the room. I don't ever want to review it because everybody said everything there is to say about that movie. I don't want to review it because it would just be a it, it would be so ridiculously uninspired. Just watch someone else's review. Sure, I could make funny edits at parts of it. I just don't. I don't want to do it. It's been done to death. Uh, I originally also said I would never do Twilight, although I checked online. It doesn't seem like a lot of people reviewed Twilight. There was a lot of unanimous hate about it. It doesn't seem like there was that many reviews of it. I assumed there would be, and that's why I said I wouldn't review it. Maybe I might do Twilight in the future, but it's kind of irrelevant now. And there's other things I want to get to. Right now, I'm <clears throat> I'm working on. Uh, that Walking Dead thing, and still trying to figure out how the fuck I'm going to do that. Because it there's a lot of work going into it, and um, I'll explain more about that one later. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to approach it. But I'm working on that and something else at the same time. That's not just my Synecdoche New York analysis. So there'll probably be another YMS out before The Walking Dead's done. Because that's such a large project that if I work on two things at once then there'll be less of a wait time uh, before something's out. The Walking Dead is still going to take a while. I've done a lot of work into it already. Even while I was working on my World War Z thing, I was working on The Walking Dead. So we'll see what happens. I'll try my best to keep you guys updated. Run, Lola, run. Not for everybody, but I enjoyed it very much so. And it would appear on the best of my year list, whatever year that came out. <clears throat> Running Scared. Uh, this movie does not hold back. I'm gonna say that much about it. Hey, there we go. Roger Ebert. Running scared goes so far over the top, I am in awe. It was pretty over the top. It was, it was well done. It's not ama amazing, but it's a, it's a good movie. Santa Sangre. Another one by Alejandro Jodorowsky. Um, apparently not in my Blu-ray case, but I have a, another, a little 
thing over there that I, I have to have things on the go. If I want to bring it somewhere, it's in there for sure. Um, and Saw 1, it's, it's a part of horror history. Uh, again, cheaper pirate, cheaper prices deter piracy. All seven movies for like 20 bucks. Um, so of course I got these because they're kind of hilarious. I made an entire review on the Saw Septology. Septology? I made an entire review, two-part review on all those movies. So check it out if you want to hear my thoughts on Saw. Um, there's another horror movie uh, collection on Blu-ray that I want. Friday the 13th. But that's still over like $100. This this shit came out pretty recently. The Nightmare on Elm Street one came out pretty recently as well. Like within the past two or three years. Friday the 13th, it is not even that recent for the Blu-ray. It's like maybe three years old or something. Like I, I guess around the same time. But these other collections selling them for $20 each. Friday the 13th, still over 100 No, they're all shit movies anyway. I want to watch them to make fun of them. Fuck you. They're not worth that much. God damn it. Like, why Why wouldn't I pirate it? I'm not going to, because I might as well just wait until the price drops anyway, until someone's going to sell it to me for like 20 bucks. But how, how do you... That's the real crime, is charging that much for that fucking Blu-ray collection. That's a real crime. Go to jail. Scanner Darkly. By Richard Linklater, the director of Boyhood. A very different movie than Boyhood. Uh, very cool animation. Watch the trailer and you'll see what I mean by cool animation. A Serious Man. I mentioned it in my 2009 review. Very well done Coen Brothers movie. Very underrated Coen Brothers movie. Uh, not that many people watched it. I watched it in theaters twice. I loved it. <clears throat> Seven. Pretty great David Fincher movie. It's a classic. What's in the box? Shame. The uh, other... Um... What's his name? I'm dying today, guys. I'm dying today. I woke up so fucking early. Not even really that early, but just compared to how, how late I've been waking up all week. And now my coffee is wearing out. My voice is dying. Steve McQueen. It's his other movie. It was in my 2011 list. Very uh, high up. Uh, Shaun of the Dead. You all know Shaun of the Dead. It's a great horror comedy. You should watch it. Zombies are e an even more popular thing now, so you should watch it again. The Shining. I love, love, love Kubrick. He was a crazy genius. And uh, Room two 237 is a piece of shit. I made a video review on Room 237. Watch it. Short bus. Uh, the most pornographic movie that I own on, on this entire shelf. Um, it is a, it, it's kind of, um, it's kind of an experimental film, uh, where they had the actors actually having sex with each other in the sex scenes in the movie. And the sex scenes are prevalent, Pre prevalent, yeah, pre prevalent in the film. And they're part of the, the characters' stories, in a sense, where some of them are struggling sexually for whatever reason or certain relationships, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there's a gay couple in the movie. There's a straight couple in the movie, et cetera. It's like, I guess it's trying to fit every demographic because, I mean, there's never really going to be a movie like this ever again, so it might as well. Um, but I thought it it was really well made. Um really daring for for what it did there's a lot of nudity but it's not it's not porn it's still got a story and it's still got characters that you can care about it's still got some emotional scenes don't watch it if you're not open-minded like there's a, an amazing like what i would consider to be like fantastic monologue Maybe not necessarily how it was written, but the culmination of the writing and its presentation and the music that was going on. There's a really, really great monologue that happens, and uh, it's it's difficult. I don't want to spoil anything, 
there's relationships uh, and and I guess kissing between. If you get bugged by sexual things, just don't watch don't watch the movie. You're missing out, and I hope that one day you overcome your insecurities and your triggers of of nudity and sexuality. Oh no, I got triggered by by seeing naked people. I hope that one day you overcome that part of yourself. Uh, it's a good movie. <laughs> the Signal. Really great horror movie. Kind of bad at parts, but it knows that it's bad at parts. And for the story that's happening in the movie, it's very fitting for what's happening. The movie is supposed to make you feel the sense of what the fuck is even happening or going on. And it totally achieves that. It's not like a necessarily confusing narrative, but just what they show is just like, what the fuck? And it's great. Um, David Bruckner directed the first third of it and uh he did a great job david bruckner being the director of the segment amateur night from vhs so both of the parts of movies that he's directed have been the best parts of those movies and yet he's never directed an entire feature length film yet we'll see what happens if he gets a feature length film but so far he's doing a pretty good job he just he hasn't directed a movie He's doing a good job. I'm going to grab another stack. Frank Miller, Sin City, the first one. So not the absolute piece of shit. I really like the first Sin City. A single man. Uh, a prime example of extreme homophobia by the Motion Pictures Association of America, given the fact that this has a PG rating in Canada, no issue, but an R rating in the United States. No language. There's like brief nudity in a photograph. But that's it. Literally, the biggest issue that the MPAA has is that the characters are gay. And uh, yeah, they're just a bunch of pieces of shit. Can't show people being attracted to each other in a way that's unconventional. Let's show people getting their arms cut off without actually bleeding to death. Let's let's show it as long as there's no blood. No blood doesn't exist. Let's show people getting trampled by giant monsters and dying in in natural disasters. But as long as you you're not too close on those people and there's no blood, then it's okay. Violence is okay. Let's just have a big shootout. But you can't show people affectionate to each other. That would be wrong. That would be the wrong type of environment to raise children in. You don't want them to grow up in a world showing affection to anyone else. You want them to grow up in a world ready to go out and buy a gun and shoot everybody. But it's video games' fault when people shoot up things. Sunshine. Funniest thing about this. Um, this is one that I had to rebuy because... Um, I, I still have my other one. I just keep it in, in a spot on my shelf where it's like I just don't fuck with it. Um, the uh, original one that got released was um, one where it worked fine for a while and then uh, Blu-ray players updated. And then after that update, for whatever reason, just Sunshine, not this Blu-ray, but the other one that I had, um, the in-picture commentary and special features would there's no there would be no way to disable them so you would try to play the movie like normal and then it would be like all of a sudden you're you're watching people talk over the movie as you're watching the movie and there's no way to turn it off so yeah they fucked up synecdoche new york my second favorite film of all time i'm working on an analysis of it to release pretty soon hopefully sooner rather than later uh we'll see if i can do it within a week Hopefully, uh, there will be blood. Paul Thomas Anderson. Great movie. It'll be in my 2007 video when I make it. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. One of the best horror movies ever made. <clears throat> and uh, amazing special effects. Amazing practical special effects. Tim and Eric's Billion Dollar Movie. Funny because it's not funny is the type of humor that I am fond of. This movie is not for everybody. It's not something I recommend to people. A lot of people hate it, and that's okay. 
You're not wrong for disliking it. I'm not wrong for liking it. Just calm down. Don't get offended. It's okay. I'm sorry I triggered you. Uh, Tom at the farm. Uh... <laughs> I'm just I'm just losing my shit now. I've been talking for way too long. I thought this would just be something short that I could do. Chris Stuckman's video was like 48 minutes, and I just briefly looked at the shelf behind him, and it seemed... I thought... I, I feel like he owns more Blu-rays than me. Why is this taking so goddamn long? Still less time than it would take for me to make a quickie, though, so I'm... It's... It's possibly the shortest amount of time that I can spend making any video to release to you guys right now. Anyway, Tom at the farm... Um, I mentioned it, I guess I'll mention it in my 2013 thing coming up, A Town Called Panic, uh, if you have some friends that smoke weed, show them this movie while they're really high on weed, it's a magical movie, and, um, it's absurd and surreal, and it's self-aware, I mentioned it in my 2009 review. Toy Story 2, another good Pixar movie. I like it better than the first one. I don't know why some people have an issue with that. Um, it was its own thing. It expanded upon the first movie's universe rather than just creating a carbon copy of it. And then Toy Story 3 was just a carbon copy of Toy Story 2. So Toy Story 2, in my opinion, is the best one. Maybe not the best in terms of its impact it had on the industry because Story Toy Story 1 was a phenomenal impact. Uh, but Toy Story 2, I, I just feel, is a better movie. Traffic. It was part of a combo pack. I still haven't watched it. <clears throat> train spotting. Uh, I love train spotting. It's a really great Danny Boyle movie. The Truman Show. Classic. Uh, before Andrew Nichol lost his brains. I lost my brains today. Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Um, I mentioned it in my 2010 list, and it's quite a funny movie. I would recommend it. I'm getting really tired. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, Unforgiven. A movie that was also in a combo pack that I haven't seen. I just need more time. In time. The Usual Suspects. It was in a combo pack, and I watched it, and um, it's a little overrated, I think. It's still good. It's not It's not amazing. It's good. Uh, up. I bought this when I was working at Blockbuster, and um, it's a good Pixar movie. It has a really good score. The whole movie isn't amazing, but, I mean, the first 20 minutes of it is pretty good, like, like really good. Uh, the rest of it, not amazing, but good. Up in the Air, I mentioned on my 2009 list, uh, the Vengeance Trilogy. This has got Old Boy, this has got uh, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, and this has got Lady Vengeance. I've seen everything but Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. And Old Boy is an amazing, amazing film. Do not watch the 2013 American remake. It's a piece of shit. That's something I could review. Get hyped! Um, v for Vendetta. You all like that. I like it. Um, God. Okay. Oh my god! I'm dying. Waking Life. Only released on Blu-ray in Germany. And it's an American movie. Um, also, Short Bus was also released on Blu-ray in Germany. So that that Blu-ray I had, you cannot you cannot get short bus uh, for a region A player. It was only released on Blu-ray in Germany. So that and Waking Life, despite them being in American movies, uh, you're a criminal if you want to be able to watch an HD version of short bus and you don't have a region B Blu-ray player. You're a criminal. Waking Life, uh, despite this being a German release, this is actually... Uh, region free so this one's good if you want to buy this on amazon or something um from the director of boyhood and a scanner darkly and a bunch of other movies shit ton of other movies the before trilogy this one's all about dreams and people talk for a while in it and it's got the two characters from the B before trilogy ethan hawk and julie depley I, I forget her, how to pronounce her name 
They show up and make a cameo appearance in the movie. It's animated very similarly to A Scanner Darkly, although this one was made first. It's very imaginative. It's very cool and interesting and, and fun to watch. I would recommend it. Uh, Waltz with Bashir. I talked about this one in my 2008 r review. Pretty cool animation. Watchmen. Uh, it was good. I bought this when I was working at Blockbuster. I don't know if, like, there's certain things that I would buy with a discount and I wouldn't buy without a discount. Um, again, just adding to the, the fact that the cheaper things are, the less people will pirate them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Watchmen, I bought it. I enjoy it. It's not amazing. It's got some, like, iffy parts to it. It's not, it wasn't on my best of the year list, but it was decent. <clears throat> Weekend, the best gay movie, in my opinion, just for like a, a straight, straight on uh, relationship movie. Just something that shows two characters having a relationship. It's a love story. And if you're a little open-minded, you can get over the fact that the characters are the same gender. Um, it's a, I think it's really well made. Um, the director and writer of this movie went on to produce a H, an HBO show called Looking, and that's just all about gay people. I saw the first, like, three episodes. It's all right. Looking is more of a thing that, like, you're bound to love it if you're a gay person, but you might not love it if you're not a gay person. Whereas Weekend, I feel like it's so substantive. And again, I mean, look, Criterion Collection, look at that. Um, it stands on its own, despite it being about gay people. It doesn't pander. It's not like the gay version of a Tyler Perry movie. You know, it's not It's not just sticking to one group and, and just saying like, okay, you can only enjoy it if you're a part of this group. Uh, Where the Wild Things Are. I bought it when I was at Blockbuster. Still pretty good. The child actor in Where, Where the Wild Things Are was really good. Really great. Like, child performances are great if it's the right child and the right director. Last one. The White Ribbon. My favorite film of 2009. Holy shit, guys. My voice is dying. Um, I hope you all uh, <laughs> enjoyed watching me fucking ramble and get pissy about my blu-ray collection um maybe i might show off the remaining dvds that i have someday but this is uh this is a video that i can just quickly get out to you guys there's gonna be minimal editing uh and so that there's something i can post while I'm working on my Synecdoche New York analysis and other things that take a lot longer to make. As you saw with my World War Z review, I spend a lot of time making these things and a lot of time and effort goes into them. So in order to have a channel where I can release things frequently, I need to have simpler projects that I can release in between those larger projects. My voice really sucks right now. I don't know what it is with how I talk. This only ever ever happens during me talking in front of a camera and a microphone at the same time. When I'm editing my when I'm doing my YMS reviews, like maybe it's just cuz I'm more doing it like this. Maybe it's cuz I'm not talking as loud. I don't know why. Um but my voice is dying right now. And uh I love you guys. <laughs>